How in the bloody hell is peace in the Middle East not the biggest story in the news cycle right now? Oh shit, that's right. Because Donald Trump was the one that made the peace agreement in the Middle East. You know, the guy that's been nominated for four Nobel Peace Prizes. And hey, what about them bombshell Joe and Hunter Biden laptop scandal? What? What do you mean, what laptop? Get a job, be a slave, pay your taxes, what the fuck? Still think that journalism is alive and kicking? Still think that news companies report the news? Then why in the hell are no reporters actually reporting or covering the Joe and Hunter Biden laptop scandal? And don't get me wrong, there are reporters covering it. They're just covering it the fuck up. <laughs> Look, there's verified evidence that ties Joe Biden to corruption in the Ukraine, China, and other countries. Evidence that the FBI has had in their possession for over a year now. The same FBI that falsified the FISA court documents on Donald Trump. So, you know, there is that. Evidence against Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, has been successfully sworn into the U.S. Senate. So let me repeat that for you, for anybody that still thinks that this is a Russian hoax. The National Director of American Intelligence said that there is no Russian interference. The Senate committee has verified that the emails, text messages, and photographs are authentic, with more witnesses to be called to collaborate further evidence that we just don't even know about yet. You get that? More evidence that we don't even know about yet. This is hard, tangible evidence against Joe and Hunter Biden. That's 100% more evidence than the Mueller investigation had on Trump. And they started countless bullshit investigations into corruption with him. They spent over a year and millions and millions of dollars investigating Donald Trump for collusion. And you know what they found? Nothing. They found nothing. It was all a big, fat, fucking nothing burger. But they all reported so-called stories on Russia every single day. There's actual evidence of collusion and corruption for, from Joe Biden. And let's not forget about the interview that Joe Biden did that you can get on YouTube where he bragged about getting the Ukraine government to fire the prosecutor that his, his, the company that his son was working for, Barishna. So again, one more time. On video, Joe Biden brags about getting the prosecutor from Barishna, the company that his son was working for, fired. That's collusion. That's exactly what they said that Donald Trump tried to do, and they impeached him for it. He literally told them, fire the fucking guy, or you're not getting the age package. No question that this was a witch hunt to Donald Trump. And there's absolutely no reporting on the Hunter Biden laptop thing. Not a fucking peep, man. This evidence is grand jury style shit. The evidence that directly ties this cockfuck to using his name for financial game. But don't think that Joe's a bad guy, though. He also used his office to help his family grow their vast wealth as president, or pardon me, vice president of the United States. And not just his own fortune, and apparently he's not greedy. Joe only takes half the money, apparently. Come on, man. He's a good dad, too. He's created high-paying jobs for his son. You know, the crack-smoking underage girl fucker Hunter Biden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's him. And think about this, Hunter Biden got to fly around the world with his daddy on Air Force One for all their secret little pay-to-play meetings with China and Ukraine, just enriching the Biden family fortune. Damn, can you imagine the parties that Joe and Hunter must have had flying to Epstein Island with Clinton and Obama? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man! That was just a joke. Calm the fuck down. But hang tight, because we haven't seen what else is on Hunter Biden's laptop yet. And apparently, there's now two of them. This guy is a serious dumbass. <laughs> Seriously, two laptops. <laughs> Listen, kids, all you at home, don't smoke crack through a meth pipe. <laughs> Seriously, though, why in the hell are reporters not covering this shit? Reporters aren't reporting anything anymore. Why do you think these so-called news media that you completely see slanted to the left every single article and story that they do? Why does every mainstream news outlet regurgitate the same robotic bullshit? I'll tell you why. Because objective journalism is dead. There are no more gonzo journalists. It's all orange man bad. That's all it is. Donald Trump broke the media as we know it. 
And the only people out there actually reporting this stuff is little independent channels that are popping up on YouTube. They're the ones really getting to the bottom of this shit. They're the ones that have the balls to talk about this shit. And hey, here's a funny, fun fucking fact for you. Did you know that there are 1,700 TV stations, 1,100 magazines, 1,500 newspapers, and over 9,000 radio stations, and just over 2,500 publishers that are owned by only six corporations. Pretty scary shit, huh? They control over 90% of what you see, hear, and read in the media every single day. Now combine that with the social media bias and the power of Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Google, and all the rest, and you really start to get a small glimpse into the control that you're under daily. In my opinion, this daily assault of slanted and fake news, as well as the censorship of information, must come to an end. These journalists and fake news agencies must be finally held accountable. They talk about Russia and China and meddling and in elections. But what about Facebook and Twitter's complete bias towards the left? They shadow ban anybody that thinks different than them, that has a different point of view. They're censoring facts and completely stripping you of your right of free speech and the search of information. And I'm not talking about hate speech. And I'm not talking about racist jackass spewing off inbred bullshit. I don't agree with hate speech. I don't agree with that shit. And I don't agree with the violence that comes as a byproduct from social media either, which Twitter and Facebook seem to have absolutely no fucking problem with when it's directed towards the right. Do you ever see a liberal politician get banned? Do you ever see any conservative groups burning the world down? Do you ever see Antifa or BLM get banned for their hate speech or called out for their violent bullshit on social media? No, because apparently hate speech is only allowed if it's coming from the left. Now think about this shit for a second. So Facebook and Twitter say that Russia bought $10,000 in electoral ads from their so-called foundations, or pardon me, platforms in 2016. And that changed the course of the 2016 election, according to Facebook and Twitter. Now, at the Senate hearings, Facebook and Twitter said that their platforms have absolutely no effect on election results. <laughs> And that they could not themselves directly affect an election with the actions that they've taken by shadow banning, censoring conservative voices. But $10,000 in Russian ads on their platform could spin the election. <laughs> These guys are so freaking stupid. They think that we're stupid. So basically, they're implying that the platform that they have 100% control over with millions and millions of people watching is less powerful than $10,000 in so-called Russian electoral ads. <laughs> I mean, I can't even. No, the days of Twi Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, YouTube, Google, and all the rest of them pretending to be platforms and not Bias publishers, those days are coming to an end, man. The wagons are circling these pricks and they know it. They're panicking. They couldn't even answer basic questions in the Senate hearings the other day. When asked if they were aware of any conservatives that were being banned or shadow banned, they replied, yes, we've got the complaints and we're working on it. When asked if they could name any politicians on the left that have been banned or shadow banned, they couldn't name any. You know why that is? Because there isn't any. They don't ban the left. All they do is amplify the left's voice. Ted Cruz even forced them to go on record and lie, which is going to backfire on them like crazy later in, in later Senate hearings. And the big tech companies right now are ter terrified of a Trump 2020 win. You know why? Because they're worried Trump's going to win the House and the Senate. Because if he does, he's going to butt fuck big tech like he is the Chinese Communist Party. Yes, he is is. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you. And just look at the fact checkers they put on Facebook and Twitter. 90% of the time it says partially incorrect, but doesn't say what isn't correct or how they even came to that conclusion or what sources they're using because they sure as hell are not using agreed upon history as a source. Check this shit out. Last week I posted a picture of Richard Burr, you know, the cocksucking grand wizard of the KKK. Well, he was in this picture in his KKK girl guide costume. There was no text on the picture other than his name and his title and that he died as a Democratic senator. And they labeled it partially incorrect. Which part? Which part was incorrect? The picture that I screenshotted from the New York Post wasn't real? Or that he wasn't really in the KKK, which he was? Or that he wasn't really wearing the costume that he was wearing in the picture, which he was? Or that he really wasn't a member of the Democratic Party or a racist piece of shit till the day that he died, which he was? 
I've seen fact checks on things that Joe Biden have said, things that I have actually physically seen at town halls, interviews, and debates. But because it makes Creepy Joe look bad, the fact check says, wait for it, partially incorrect. <laughs> hell checks the fact checkers, man. Seriously. No, enough is enough. In my opinion, the legal freedoms that the social media giants are enjoying because of Section 230 need to be revoked. They are not acting as a platform. They are acting as publishers with a bias and they should be treated as such and open to liability and lawsuits. So a quick breakdown on Section 21. It's basically to protect big companies from liability for anything published or posted by third parties on their platform. The idea was to encourage new communication and services through the internet when it was first starting out, to help it grow, let it flourish, an open exchange of ideas and communication with no boundaries. And what did we get? Candy crush requests and porn. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the internet. <laughs> Section 230 was enacted in 1996 as part of a law called the Communications Decency Act. When the law was written, social media companies were worried that they could be sued if they exercised any control over what appeared on their platforms. It makes sense. So Section 230 also includes a provision that says, so long as the platform acts in good faith, they can remove content that is offensive or otherwise objective so long as they act in good faith. And this is where the, they, they've screwed up. This is where the good faith has been broken. And fortunately, very easily proven by their obvious bias towards dissenting opinions. That's the difference between being a platform and a publisher. And they are now acting as, well, then they, they've always been acting as publishers, but particularly now with shadow banning. And these ignorant pricks have been dancing that line ever since the beginning. But the real issue now is that the power and influence these big tech companies have grown exponentially. They have a huge influence at in everything that we see, hear, and think. So when they take it upon themselves to start acting as publishers with an opinion, it is very clear contradiction of Section 230, which is why Senator Cruz is tearing them apart over this right now. And you can bet your sweet ass that there's going to be big changes to the way big tech runs their companies in the next year or so with a Donald Trump win in 2020. And here's some strife advice for you. Get your life jackets, your floaties, your noodles, whatever the hell you fuckers need to survive the flood because it is going to be a sea of liberal tears. Seriously though, the streets are gonna be flooded and stained with blue Kool-Aid, man. It's gonna look like the goddamn Smurfs went to war. <laughs> Get ready, November 3rd for a sea of liberal tears. Well, that's it for me. I'm Sean Strife. Click that like button, hit that notification bell, and smash the shit out of that subscribe button. And join me next time where we're going to talk about more shit that we're not supposed to talk about. That's right. You heard me. I said smash that subscribe channel.